Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. When a market is at equilibrium, consumers and firms mutually benefit. The quantity of a good or service demanded by consumers equals the quantity supplied by firms, and the market price is optimal for both consumers and firms. Here's the deal. Consumers enter the product market freely in the hopes of purchasing goods and services that will maximize their utility. Firms enter the product market freely in the hopes of producing goods and services that will maximize their profits. Consumers and firms interact in the product market through a silent negotiation known as voluntary exchange in the hopes of reaching an agreement where both participants mutually benefit as utility and profits are maximized. For example, let's say you walk into a car dealership. You go in having decided that you're going to buy a new car, but you're not going to pay over $40,000 for it. This price is your buyer's maximum price. Meanwhile, the dealer watches you walk up and he's strategizing on how to close a deal and sell you a car. He decides that he's not going to go any lower than $20,000 when selling you a car. This is the seller's minimum price. You don't reveal your buyer's maximum price to the dealer because you want to save as much money as possible, hoping you can get a car as far below $40,000 as possible. If you told him you're willing to pay $40,000, he'll price the car you want at $40,000. Likewise, the dealer doesn't reveal his seller's minimum price to you because he wants to earn as much profit as possible. So he hopes he can get you to buy a car as far above $20,000 as possible. If he told you he's willing to sell for as low as $20,000, you just offer to buy the car you want at $20,000. The dealer shows you several cars at various prices. You weren't interested in the $50,000 car because the price was way too high. You didn't like the $35,000 car because it didn't have the features you want. And the $25,000 car was basic and ugly. Each time you turn down a car, Use signals to the dealer through a silent negotiation that either the price or the car is not what you're looking for. And then, you see it. The car of your dreams. You slowly walk up to the sticker on the window. Here it is, the moment of truth. And the car is priced at $30,000. Hallelujah! You shake hands with the dealer, sign the papers, and drive off the lot with the car you've always wanted. Better yet, you got the car for $30,000, a full $10,000 below your buyer's maximum. Not only did you get the car you wanted, but you saved $10,000 too. Haha, <laughs> that sucker at the dealership had no idea. Except that back at the dealership, the dealer is ecstatic. Not only did he close the deal and make the sale, but he sold you the car for $30,000, a full $10,000 above his seller's minimum. Not only did he earn profits, but he made an extra $10,000 in his book. Ha, <laughs> who's the sucker now? Well, no one. Because through voluntary exchange, both you as the consumer and the dealership as the seller mutually benefited from the transaction. You satisfied your utility, and you saved a little extra on the side. He sold the product and earned a little extra profit at the same time. Everyone benefits at equilibrium. This is a product market at equilibrium. The market equilibrium point at the intersection of the demand and supply curves indicates the quantity of output that firms in the industry are currently producing, as well as the quantity of output that consumers in the industry are currently purchasing. As you can see, the quantity supplied by firms equals the quantity demanded by consumers, meaning that this market and any market at equilibrium is allocatively efficient. Allocative efficiency occurs when firms produce the optimal quantity of a good or service demanded by consumers. In other words, firms don't underproduce or overproduce. Instead, they carefully allocate scarce resources toward the production of a good or service that consumers desire, and they produce the exact quantity that consumers demand. Voluntary exchange between consumers and firms in the product market results in an equilibrium where the quantity of output demanded by consumers equals the quantity of output supplied by firms. It also establishes an optimal price level for output in the product market, agreed upon by both consumers and firms. But how do we know all that? Well, 
We can prove that equilibrium is mutually beneficial to consumers and firms by analyzing disequilibrium in the market. Whenever price levels change in the product market without a fundamental change to either supply or demand, the market will experience disequilibrium. There are two types of market disequilibrium, market surplus and market shortage. Market surplus is the condition in the product market where price levels have risen too high causing the quantity supplied to be greater than the quantity demanded. As price level increases in the market, the quantity of output demanded by consumers decreases because they are less willing or less able to consume goods and services now that they are more expensive. At the same time, firms will increase the quantity of output supplied as they seek to maximize profits as inflation occurs. This results in a surplus of output in the product market. But the market should return to equilibrium on its own through natural market forces. With an excess of goods in the market, firms will feel the pressure to lower their prices in order to avoid losses. Lower prices should increase the quantity of output demanded, and the market surplus will become smaller. Eventually, as prices continue to deflate, the quantity of output demanded will increase, and the quantity of output supplied will decrease until price level reaches a point where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied, and the product market returns to equilibrium. For example, at a price of P2, the price in the market is too high above equilibrium. Consumers are less willing and able to purchase the products sold in this market because it is too expensive, and therefore decrease the quantity they demand to 25 units. At the same time, the firms in this market boost their production output and increase the quantity they supply to 125 units in the hopes of earning greater profits now that prices are higher. This creates an excess of output, or a market surplus, of 100 units. Feeling the pressure to avoid losses, firms will lower prices in order to sell more units. Because the product is now less expensive, consumers will increase the quantity they demand to 50 units, and firms will reduce their output to 100 units now that each unit earns less revenue. This will cause the market surplus to shrink to 50 units. Eventually, natural market forces will continue to push the product price back towards equilibrium. And at a price of P4, the quantity demanded and quantity supplied in the product market equals 75 units. The market has returned to equilibrium. Market shortage is the condition in the product market where price levels have fallen too low, causing the quantity demanded to be greater than the quantity supplied. As price level decreases in the market, the quantity of output demanded by consumers increases because they are more willing or more able to consume goods and services now that they are less expensive. At the same time, firms will decrease the quantity of output supply as they see a smaller chance to earn large profits as deflation occurs. This results in a shortage of output in the product market, but the market should return to equilibrium on its own through natural market forces. With too few goods in the market, consumers will feel the pressure to pay higher prices in order to purchase goods to satisfy their utility. Higher prices will lead to an increase in the quantity of output supplied, and the market shortage should become smaller. Eventually, as prices continue to inflate, the quantity of output supplied will increase, and the quantity of output demanded will decrease until price level reaches a point where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied and the product market returns to equilibrium. For example, at a price of P2, the price in the market is too far below equilibrium. Because of a lesser chance for profits, firms are less willing and able to produce the products sold in this market, and therefore decrease the quantity they supply to 100 units. At the same time, consumers in this market increase the quantity they demand to 500 units, now that the product is less expensive. This creates a market shortage of 400 units. Because the product they need or want is hard to find, consumers will feel the pressure to pay higher prices in order to purchase it. And as price level increases to P3, the quantity supplied by firms will increase to 200 units. At the same time, consumers will reduce the output they demand to 400 units, now that each unit is more expensive. This will cause the market shortage to shrink to 200 units. Eventually, Natural market forces will continue to push the product price back towards equilibrium. And at a price of P4, the quantity demanded and quantity supplied in the product market equals 300 units. The market has returned to equilibrium.
The market forces of supply and demand establish equilibrium in the product market. This means that changes in supply and demand will lead to new market equilibriums, which alters the price and quantity of goods and services in the respective product markets. For example, suppose that the United States Congress provides a $100 per unit subsidy for every ton of corn produced by American farmers. In order to collect the per unit subsidy, corn farmers will increase the production levels and boost corn output, leading to an increase in the supply of corn in the corn market. After this fundamental change in supply, the corn market will have a new equilibrium. The price of corn will decrease, and corn output will increase as consumers demand a greater quantity now that corn is less expensive. Ultimately, a per unit subsidy for corn farmers led to an increase in the supply of corn in the corn market, which increased the quantity produced and made corn more affordable. Now suppose that consumers expect the price of gasoline to rise next week. Consumers will decide to buy more gas now while it's cheaper and fill up their tanks before it becomes more expensive leading to an increase in the demand for gasoline in the gasoline market. After this fundamental change in demand, the gasoline market will have a new equilibrium. The price of gas will increase, and gasoline output will increase as firms boost the quantity they supply to meet increased consumer demand. Ultimately, the expectation of higher gas prices led to an increase in the demand for gas in the gas market which increased the quantity of gasoline produced and made gas more expensive. Now suppose that the price of wheat increases, and wheat is a major resource used in the production of bread. As wheat becomes more expensive, production costs increase for firms that produce bread, meaning these firms won't be able to afford as many inputs as they used to, and will have fewer inputs to produce with, leading to a decrease in the supply of bread in the bread market. After this fundamental change in supply, the bread market will have a new equilibrium. The price of bread will increase, and bread output will decrease as consumers demand a lesser quantity now that bread is more expensive. Ultimately, an increase in resource prices and production costs led to a decrease in the supply of bread in the bread market, which decreased the quantity of bread produced and made bread more expensive. Lastly, suppose that the price of limes, a substitute good for lemons, decreases. Because lemons and limes are close substitutes, consumers will choose to buy greater quantities of limes because they're cheaper than lemons, leading to a decrease in the demand for lemons in the lemon market. After this fundamental change in demand, the lemon market will have a new equilibrium. The price of lemons will decrease, and lemon output will decrease as firms reduce the quantity they supply to adjust for decreased consumer demand. Ultimately, a decrease in the price of a substitute good led to a decrease in the demand for lemons in the lemon market, which decreased the quantity of lemons produced and made lemons more affordable. And that's market equilibrium. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy my channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my government intervention video, or you can click here for my micro minute video on movements along supply and demand curves. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.